Hey, what's up with the camera living people? Welcome to the Minjunji Show where we talk about super cool cameras and we talk about super cool things. Sorry if my voice is a little strange in this video. Uh, I've got a blocked nose as well, so I might, you know, choke a certain time when I speak. But today I'm going to talk about the LCW. W. What's my impression on the LCW camera? Before trying it out in the streets, <coughs> before trying out the camera, I wasn't really sure if I'm going to like the camera. Minjunji, you buy something you don't know about the quality? I'm financially capable. I buy the camera just to do the Minjunji Show for you guys. And this video is especially dedicated to the people who want, who's interested, but um, not know if it's worth buying. And also, this video is for people who's um, having problem with the price, which I'll be explaining at the end of the video. So let's talk about all the bad things about this camera first. First of all, from top, the finder. The finder sucks. <laughs> Sorry, guys, say this, but the finder sucks. It's unaccurate to a level where you don't even just you don't even care about looking into the finder anymore. You start shooting with your own sense. Let me explain why with some pictures over here. Here is a photo I took at the Botanic Garden. Uh, this was what I saw in the finder, but this is how the photo turned out to be. Because of this framing, most of the photo will turn out to look as if your composition is always in the middle. One problem with this finder is that when you try to compose an image, for example, this one, this is where you'll be framing. Surely you'll know what to do when you get used to it. But since it was my first time using the LCW, I didn't know that the finder would be that much of a difference. In my opinion, you can compose a better image if you find an external finder that is around 20mm to 15mm. The next thing is not a bad thing about the camera, but it's just something that bugs me personally. It's the grip. The firm grip feeling is it's gone. If, if you guys go to a little Murphy shop, just, just go to where the LCA camera is, feel the LCW, just feel it like this. You know, because this part is bulging upwards, like feeling to it, it's like you lose your security. Yeah, you know, the feeling is just a little different. You know, after touching this, and then just go back touching your LCA, you be like, wow, that's so much better. You know, so much more security. You probably be like, it's just a camera. Why do you go so far about the grip and stuff? Because you have to hold it for a really long time, and the feeling is just, it's just that. But I asked the staff from Lomography, why did this part have to be bulged up? And they told me about the lens and some stuff that they cannot not have it over there. The next thing that's not so good about the entire thing, the packaging actually, is the two extra frames. They come in um, half frame and the other one's a square format. Maybe someone out there who needs it and stuff. As for me, uh, another personal idea of um, having a bad thing is that you won't really use it. Because the thing is, you put this frame into the camera and it's set there for, for the entire time. Uh, you have to finish 34 shots or 36 shots and then you can switch this out. It's not something impromptu. It's like, oh, I want to square. Oh, I should rectangle right now. And I, I just put it somewhere else and just throw it away. Let's go to the pros and talk about the good stuff. As simple as ABC. It's a freaking 17 millimeter lens, wide angle, full frame, full size, you know, because it's film, full size camera, pocketable, compact, Minigon. Probably from Biogon, you know, Carl Zeiss Biogon, and then Minitar, Minitar Plus Biogon, Minigon, 17 millimeters. I think the most expensive part of the entire camera is the lens. It's a wide angle lens, wide angle lenses are not easy to make, and that's where the entire value of the entire camera is, this amazing lens. The distortion, the vignettes are just perfectly alright, you know, it's not overdone. The Lomo feeling to it, this is it, it's never lost. It's wide angle, vignette, and distortion is just perfect. It's not overdone, it's not underdone, it's just nice. And I really like how the focusing works. 0.4 to 0.9 that's anything that you can reach with your hands is will be um, 0.4 to 0.9 if we switch to 0.9 to infinity anything that you cannot reach with your own hands will be at that focusing point so and and it's because there's switches to it that there's this amazing beautiful depth of field to it depth of field is totally enough to, to make the image pop out there are other functions like um, half frame gear so turning the gear to half frame and only that's that's half frame you can't go anymore you can take another picture if it's full frame that's a full frame you hear the difference it's longer not just the gear switching there's also um, the frame switching in the front okay so you can have a lot of combinations with it some of the photos are taken with one half frame frame and then uh, one full frame again, one frame in the middle with another frame. I, I did some full frame shots with half frame gear. It's gonna be like a panorama because it, it didn't switch to the next frame, but instead it switched halfway and then you take another picture, you go back and you take another picture, you know what I mean.
you know, you just gotta think of uh, a lot more fun stuff. It's my short review on good and the bad of the camera. Right now, I'm just gonna discuss with you guys, is the camera worth it? Honestly, the price doesn't sound very attractive at all. That's because you guys haven't really tried out the camera, you know, you just know the functions and stuff about the camera, but haven't really, you know, felt the camera. You know, touch it, shoot a roll of film with it, and then get your negatives developed and look at the photo and it's like, wow, I did that, I took that picture. But, but let's put it this way, but have you ever had a wide-angle camera? Have you ever tried a wide-angle camera? Not counting on um, fisheye cameras. Fisheye is fisheye. It's, it's not wide-angle. Well, you can say super wide-angle, but it's totally different. Okay, just, just let's separate this. Do you have a wide-angle camera at this size? At this, at this amazing, amazing small size? It's the size of my hand. But you can't find it. I'm reading comments from my previous videos. People are like, "Oh, it's expensive. It's it's ripping people off." Blah blah blah. Uh, I might as well get an SLR camera and this and that and everything. So let's all break it down. Let's break it down right now today. Like I know a few cameras at this size, like a super wide and slim camera from Vivitar. That's actually 22 millimeters at f/11. There's no shutter speed control, no nothing. Some of the pictures are just you know it's all about manipulation. The reason why I usually use. Um, negative films, it's because I want to show the, the, the beauty of the camera itself. I don't want to show, you know, if I put a reversal film in it, cross-processing it, and then it's, oh, the Lumo effect, you know, you can do anything with that. <laughs> Just the, the beauty of the camera itself is not shown if you do that. You can make a pinhole camera and just cross-processing everything, and look, oh, wow, that's the Lomo effect. Like I, thought, like, I, like I was saying, the Vivitar camera, there's no depth of field to that. If you take a picture, there's no nice depth of field of the of the picture you were taking. Got no auto shutter speed control. It's, it's it's a nice simple camera, but not a, you know, not at this grade. If you want to compare the two grades, it's, it's totally not the same grade. It's totally different level. But after shooting a while, GR21, I can actually say that I can put this two at almost the same. I love both cameras at the same level. And we pop a black and white film into Lomo LCW. The photos are amazing. Check this out. Put this two together. Feeling it's it's pretty amazing. The compactness is almost the same. Definitely worth um, putting this two at uh, a comparison. Maybe I'll do a video in the future of these two cameras being compared. Kind of wide-angle lens camera, compact, um, at this level. Talking about um, you know some R1s or um, some uh, wide-angle um, f11, uh, but must but not the GR1 or not the uh, GR1s, not the GR1v because those are standard. Um, those are standard lenses. 20, uh, 21, pretty close to 17. Well, maybe not that close, but. And some other comments about, um, oh, the Mography is just a toy camera company that's selling toy camera. Why are they making things so expensive? Why are they, uh, you know, raising the price and stuff? First of all, I don't know where you get the concept that Lomography is selling toy cameras. People gave the name toy camera to Lomography. If you ask any Lomography staffs in the shop, ask them, hey, are you guys selling toy cameras? And they'll tell you, no, we don't sell toy cameras. We sell analog cameras. And if you go on Wikipedia and search Lomography, you see there isn't anything about toy cameras. There's nothing associated with toy cameras in Wikipedia page. And if you go to Lomography as well, you won't see anything you know associated with that. But the opposite. If you look for toy cameras, you'll see that Lomo Lomography is... Uh, because people labeled Lomography ca as toy cameras. Lomography didn't say that, hey, we're toy cameras, we're selling toy cameras. This camera, at this price, maybe it's a little overpriced, just a little. This lens over here, this Minigon that they claim the name to be, this lens here is probably the most... I don't know if you know about, you know, glass and physics and stuff. Um, having an aperture at, around this, um, it'd be better if it's 3.5, but this is 4.5. You know how much a wide-angle lens at 70mm full-frame version is on the Nikon body, or a, a Canon body, or any body, or just, just, do you know how much it's cost on the Leica body? Or, it's, you know, having such a super wide-angle on such a compact body, it's really something uh, innovative. I think it's worth it, you know, it'll be in the market for a really long time, so don't worry, you know, it's not a rush, you, you don't have to get it right now, you can get it sometime later, you know, after a month, after two months, after three months, or four months, just save up some money and get it, if you're interested in it. If you're not interested in it, just move on, do whatever you want, you know, go go to a club, spend, spend $50 a night, and then, so this, this video is for the people who's interested, so if you're interested in getting this and you don't have the money yet, it's okay, just save up, get it, it adds to your working motivation. 
if you don't, if you think it's a ripoff, forget it. Don't get it. Don't buy it. No one's forcing you. No one's at your door holding a knife at your neck. It's like, hey, buy this camera. If you don't buy this camera, I'm going to kill you. No one did that. No one said that. So, you know, if you don't like the camera, leave it alone. If you find today's me Junior show useful, see you next time. Bye. With a certain person's signature. <laughs>